Many of our seniors face these hardships alone, with no family to help them through. Others enjoy the benefit of a family member or loved one who can be their caregiver. But being a caregiver can present challenges. Providing care to a parent or loved one while trying to balance a job and a life of your own can be overwhelming and can take its toll. When Mama died on December 11, uh, Daddy was not well, had not been well for some time, and uh, was um, declining. And I really had my hands full. Not only was I sitting at the hospital with Mama, um, just trying to take turns taking care of him, so I realized right off the bat that I was going to have to do something to take care of him. So I was staying here at night, and then I'd leave this home at 6 o'clock in the morning and go to my home, and then go on to work from there, and it was very hard. Um, had to take him to the doctor several times during all that. It just seemed like I just could not gain any ground. Our family caregiver program here in the Upper Cumberland, we really strive to meet the needs of our caregivers and their loved ones. Um, here at our area agency, we offer home and community-based services for our caregivers to give to the care recipient or their loved one. Um, we offer home and community-based services such as homemaker, personal care, and home-delivered meals. Recently, we've been very fortunate to be able to have the funding to provide counseling for our caregivers, which has made a tremendous difference in their lives. A lot of our caregivers um, face isolation, so having someone to come in and talk to them about their depression and what they're going through has been very, very helpful for us. They immediately told me that Daddy would qualify for certain uh, aspects of care. Uh, there was levels that he would uh, be able to uh, qualify for. One of those being Meals on Wheels, which has just been amazing. Not only is it good food, the uh, conversation and the rapport that they have, uh, they look for him. If he's not here, they call me immediately, where's your daddy? And then the lady that comes from Home Health. Well, we just couldn't do without Joey. And uh, she came to us when we really needed her so badly. And relieved Diane of, uh, of course, she had her job to work. So it's relieved her uh, on my, my part. I came up here and he was feeling, uh, he was feeling kind of rough at the time when I first started coming up here. And I encouraged him to do what he can for himself and uh, I let him know that, you know, he, the world's not coming to an end. He, he can keep going, the God, that God would want him to keep going. It took us a couple of days to kind of get used to each other. I have been trying to clean the house. I would literally, you can imagine, taking care of two homes. Um, so I would tell Joy, you know, I've done so-and-so, or I've done this room, and I've not done the washing. Can you change his bed? or? You know, can you see to the refrigerator? Just the normal aspects of taking care of someone else's home. So after a point, I finally said to Joy, Joy, I'm not going to interfere with anything you want to do. This house is yours. You take care of it. And I don't, I don't ask her any questions. She does a marvelous job. I don't just treat my people like a job. I treat them like I would my own family. She cleans up any dishes he has. Uh, and then begins her daily routine. So she even takes care of the flowers. I left the flowers. I said, Joy, will you put these in the ground for me? And you know how pretty the house looks. Uh, so she's just been a godsend to us. And uh, so I just, I told her this week, I said, do not ever consider leaving me. Another program that we've been trying to implement here in the Upper Cumberland is a program called REST. We've used the Markland model. We recruit volunteers from the community to come in and give our caregivers respite. And respite is just a short break. Because like I said earlier, a lot of our caregivers are isolated. So this helps them out tremendously. Um, we've also been partnering with a local university, Tennessee Tech, and we've been getting interns from their sociology department. Last semester, I had one intern, and the, the semester before, I had two. So, so far, we've been able to come up with over 200 hours of respite that has been provided to our caregivers, which has made a huge difference. Caregivers are just really under, they're underpaid individuals. Um, a lot of them quit their jobs in order to take care of their loved one. 
So there's a, just a huge need for it, especially with the seniors, um, what we call the baby boomer generation coming up in aging. So what you're having now is we're having what we call a sandwich generation. So you have people that are in their 50s who have a child in the home, but then also have an aging parent. So they're really struggling. So we're really just trying to struggle here in our, in our agency to come up with resources for them. Um, funding streams are very limited, so anything that we can do outside the box is, just, is very helpful to our caregivers. And the REST program has just been a wonderful, wonderful tool to help combat that. Though there are obstacles facing many of our seniors, and the future they face may seem discouraging, there is hope. Individuals, community groups, and government agencies who are aware of their plight are working together to overcome these obstacles. One of our mottos is providing solutions through regional cooperation. And when we think about that, we, a lot of times we think about crossing county lines to pull the resources of our county governments, but it also means reaching out to our civic and our charitable organizations and certainly our faith-based organizations to try and to pull all the resources in the Upper Cumberland trying to help the various needs that we have. One of the programs that the state of Tennessee offers for uh, help with elderly is called the Choices Program. And the Choices Program is what I work with and as an RN I go out and evaluate elderly um, and also disabled in the community and you have to be 65 and older or 21 and older with a disability to qualify and there are some financial limitations. And what we do is we go out and evaluate what um, the clients are able to do or where they're lacking in safety issues and we um, do what's called a PAE, a preliminary evaluation um, and we assessment evaluation and we go out and, and sort of fill this out, send it to Ten Care, and this is a Ten Care program. Ten Care determines whether they think that they would be eligible, and then once they get on the program, if they're eligible, then we provide services in the home. It's a home and community-based service. When I go to the doctors, which I do very regularly, uh, two last week and one this week coming, uh, Medicare and Ten Care pay completely for me. So I don't have to pay uh, when I do that normally. In conversation, you mentioned VA benefits. And I had always wondered about that, but I couldn't really get a straight answer. From, and Woody didn't pursue it. It wasn't anybody's fault but my own. I should have, I should have went deeper. Um, you, you stated the fact that he, you felt like he should have been drawing his benefits, and, and quite maybe for some time. So. Within days, I hunted up all of his service records, uh, got those to the VA representative here in Livingston, and immediately, within minutes, he said he should have already been drawing, and he told me the scale, and it was nearly $1,000 more a month than what him and Mama would have been getting through Social Security. Our goal is to keep them in the home because it's a home and community-based service. And instead of them going to the nursing home, which is extremely expensive for the state of Tennessee, we can put them back, keep them in the home, which is better for them, and provide services for them, and it's cheaper for the state, and it's better for the clients. So um, it's a terrific program, and it's one that we're sort of trying to promote and let people know that it's out there and trying to help our elderly in the community. His health and attitude had improved, and he would tell me, he would say, if I can just live a little while longer, that you're getting everything in place if I can just live a little while longer. And uh, uh, he said, I know we miss Mama, but said we, we can get through this. And, uh, and we did. You know, uh, shortly after the first of the year, we found out he had been approved for benefits from VA. Things started to move very quickly. Um, I got the letter that said, you know, he's going to get $925 more every month. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh and uh, started buying things for him that we wanted him to have.